So I've just landed in beautiful Anchorage, Alaska. And I'm excited because this area once formed a land bridge that connected the Asian and North American continents. And it was via that land bridge that all kinds of incredible prehistoric creatures and even our early human ancestors migrated to populate the North American continent. Today, Alaska is one of North America's most wild places. And I'm heading to an area called the Matanuska Glacier, an area, according to local legend, has mystical and magical powers. sound. Trail goes this way, but let's see what that sound is. The sound's getting much louder. It's coming from this cave. Holy mammoths here. This is absolutely insane. Look at these animals. Right, I gotta see if I can get closer. I can't believe there's woolly mammoths. incredible to have these giant mammoths sitting right here. These creatures that somehow can survive in this frozen wasteland. A lot of people don't know this, but right here in North America, during the Ice Age, during the Pleistocene, was home to more giant animals, more megafauna, over a hundred times more than the plains of Africa today. This small family herd are ecosystem engineers, and what that means is these animals will actually shape an environment because they're so large and they're so impactful. Their giant bodies, their heavy feet will break through the ice and let you get water to drink. Their dung will fertilize the soil and grow berries and fruits. And these animals right here are one of the very reasons that our early ancestors were able to make it to North America through this incredibly harsh environment. And so if I have any chance of survival in the Ice Age, it's following these huge creatures hopefully not getting killed by them. Alaska is a challenging place to navigate even today. I mean, ultimately, to be able to survive, we have to have shelter, we have to have food, we have to be able to gather that food, and typically that means hunting in this case. Um, we also have to be able to make fires, and we rely upon these fires, which means that we also need trees in these ecosystems if we're going to burn things. That should work. Humans essentially have to be incredibly creative and resilient to be able to sort of live amongst uh, these megafauna. Fire is absolutely essential to survival, especially in these Arctic environments. So this nice straight young birch make a good spear. That's perfect. As you can see, sharp as a razor. And just take this, open that up right there. Oh yes, look at that meat. Oh yes. Mm. Oh God, I need this protein so badly.
after weeks of following the mammoth migration, keeping this sort of proximity to them, they're finally starting to relax and accept me and allow me to be close to them. I realize that I'm not actually a predator or a threat, which is really helping my survival. It's allowing me to follow the migration route and continue further away from this incredibly cold area as they head south. Survival during the Pleistocene, during the Ice Age, is one of the most difficult times for our early ancestors. And the fact that they were so reliant on these big giant animals to survive is more evident for me now than ever. It's the only way that I'm able to stay alive. However, it does actually paint a target on my back as I am the soft, fleshy meat bag that any predator around here would choose to go for if they're hunting these mammoths. This is not good. Look at the size of that predator track out here on the Bering Land Bridge during the Ice Age. There's really only one predator that that could be, and that's a scimitar cat. It's not surprising that we find Homotherium in this region. It was a saber-toothed cat. Uh, it was a formidable predator. Homotherium, from other studies, we've actually been able to figure out was a pursuit predator a little bit more like a cheetah than like a jaguar. It's able to actually run uh, in one direction and actually chase down its prey. And this is in contrast to a lot of other cats which really rely on sort of ambush predation, hiding from the trees or hiding from cover to actually capture their prey. This is an incredibly worrying sign. I'll have to just be extra careful tonight. juvenile mammoth has the confidence to leave the herd and come and check me out. He's coming, he's coming closer. Wow, look, he's coming right up. Wow, that is amazing. Have a mammoth come up like that and smell me and touch me. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's like spook the mammoth. There's a cat. There's a big cat. It's coming, it's coming. <laughs> 